Welcome to another episode of Hey Man. I am Josh Wolf. I am Jacob Wolf. This is Hey Man. Hey Man. Can I tell? First of all, back uh, back from Panama. Yeah. And um, so we still haven't figured. I'm in LA, and um, so but we are going to figure out the studio situation now that he's back. I can't decide if I'm going to fly down here. <laughs> You think we would have had us centered in front before we started this? No, I was just trying to move closer to you. Can I tell you something, by the way? So lean forward. Here's what's crazy, guys. And so I know for those of you who are listening, just that six inches, we're lined up right now. But even your... I've oh, never... Tattoo. Nice. Can I say something? I've, I've never thought that you're... And I mean this in the nicest way. That your, your dome was so much bigger than mine. I got a big head. There's not a lot behind these, but not a lot behind these brown eyes. Not a couple thoughts, but I got a big head, dude. Like, but here's the deal, you know, giant domes are what are successful in Hollywood. Ben Affleck, the only reason he's continued to work is because his head's so big. Did you know that? But, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I would love to start that rumor, by the way. I think that would be so much fun to start. I will tell you right now, dude. First of all, your hair looks it's out of control right now, but I appreciate it. But like, so stand, sit up straight, real quick. Yo, know, like legit. I gotta tell you guys, I when I sat down, when we sat down to do this, and when we turned on that camera, I was like, oh shit, like you're a grown man. Mm, I'm a person. You're like a human person. Yep. Uh, you know, and I, and I know people take umbrage when I say this, but kids, like a four year old, I mean, uh, technically human, but not like, not really. Do you know what I mean? Like biologically human. Yo, they're a kid, but they're not like a they're not like a human. You know, they're not like contributing. They're just drunk adults to society. Just toddlers. Yeah, you're just it's a different classification. Yeah, but you are now like uh, a grown human. Twenty five. Fuck, dude. Twenty five. Did you have any idea in your head what you thought you'd be doing at twenty five? I mean, a couple. Not until like. I mean, when I was going into college, I just assumed I was going to try and be working at a, like a, at ESPN, you know, because I, I went into journalism and went in for sports broadcasting and stuff like that. And so, you know, if you would have told me when I turned 18 and graduated high school that this is where I'd be at 25, I probably would have guessed something different. Wait, so, you know, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster too. Um, and would you have wanted to, first of all, what sport would you have wanted to do? I, second of all. Would you want it to be the play-by-play -play or the color guy? Well, I wanted to be the guy at the desk on ESPN News covering oh, yeah, good all one. the news. Good one. That's the one I wanted to be because yeah, I love the I love growing up watching Stuart Scott. Was he your favorite? Piece. Stuart Stuart Scott's my absolute favorite, one hundred percent. Really? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. He yeah, was the man. best. He was, he he was hard the best. Argue, hard argue. And also, he had you know a good tone. He had excitement when it needed to be. His presence was always felt. Um, his commercials for like the ESPN like catchphrases is great. Catchphrase is great, um, and just an all around stellar guy. It was a bummer to uh, bummer to lose him for the sports world a couple years ago. Can that. I tell you? Now those, I love him. Those awesome. ESPN commercials are amazing. Super good with the mascots and. However, the best sports commercial of all time is still "Chicks Dig the Long Ball." You might have been too young. Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox. It was Nike. And it was when McGuire and Sosa were all, you know, and they did a whole commercial about, you know, we're the best pitchers in the world, but like chicks dig the long ball. And Interesting. So, oh, you never saw chicks dig the long ball? Mm -mm. Yo, chicks <laughs> dig the long ball. What's your favorite ESPN commercial? You know, like the funny ones. I think one of my favorite ones is when Poppy was in the, uh, was in like a conference room and he was sitting there and he like took a Yankee hat and tried on the Yankee hat and he was like, meh, all right. And then Wally walked by and he goes, Wally, no, it's, it's not what it looks like, yeah, Wally, dude. my man. And Wally like, walks one. away. Or the, like the, the Eli and Peyton ones when they're walking through and they're like so flicking good. each other in the air or tripping each other. Like those ones are super funny. I like the Steph Curry one too when they have Curry chicken for lunch. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's like obviously a big fan. Hey guys, I do it all for you. And they're like, Guy really likes the curry chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the other one where uh, where they watch Arnold Palmer make an Arnold Palmer. Oh, so good. Yo, uh, that all the cafeteria actually, ones. The cafeteria ones are so good. The Arnold Palmer one might be my favorite. Because they watch and they go, ah, oh, 
just watching greatness. And yeah, it dude. just ends. It's fucking Fuck awesome. You. It's great. I Chicks love that. Chicks take the long ball, though. You should YouTube. I'm going to. I'm going to after this, for sure. Chicks take the I think Chicks take the long ball is the incubator for all of the ESPN commercials. It's got to start somewhere. It's what, like, that, by the way, you know, to me, honestly, me, I like their commercials more than their shows. Well, I'll, also, uh, you and I watch the same seven sports centers at between the hours of 1 and 4 a.m. when we're in a hotel room. What is your, it's funny, you know, when your mom and I, we both like to fall asleep with the TV on, but we both fall asleep to different things, right? So she likes to watch movies. Movies do not put me to sleep. Oh, they put me to sleep. I watch sport, sports center puts me to sleep. Everything puts me to sleep. This is putting me to sleep. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, I can. Can I, you fall asleep really easy? You can I'm fall asleep. Not gonna easy. lie, right now, if you were to sit and do the rest of this podcast, I could fall asleep on camera right now. You have always been able to sleep. It's in, one. Of, it's one of my favorite talents. I can fall asleep pretty much anywhere. You, old people, and athletes. Yo, athletes can straight up. I'm taking a nap. <laughs> Yeah, and they're just like done. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. But uh, you, 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 and you have always been able to sleep through. Yo, I always thought, what a great skill. I wish I could sleep like a baby. I, I, I would love to be able to sleep so hard that not sounds dirty, but it isn't. I would love to be able to sleep so deep asleep that somebody could pick me up, carry me around, put me somewhere else, and then I would just like. Yo, my favorite thing traveling, when I used to travel with the cable guy and we used to go on the tour bus. The tour bus was so cool. Oh my God. It was so cool. Everything. But Everything. the best part was you would sleep in that middle section of the tour bus, which was like, it was pitch black. Because yeah. you're in the middle of a tour bus. There's no windows and both sections close, slide close off. So there's no light coming in unless no. you turn a light on. So it is pitch black. And then you're just being, this looks dirty, but it isn't too. But you're just being rocked to sleep. You're like a FedEx package. You go to sleep in one city, and, and you wake up in another. It's yeah. fucking great. Yeah, it was kind of fun. The tour bus? Yeah, I enjoyed it, for sure. I just also love it that when you lay down and look up on the ceiling, like where you're in, in your little bunk, there's a TV on the on the roof of your it bunk. It was such it's a great. fucking cool way. Because then I didn't have to like look where to like look where to watch TV and just look straight up Dude, and just watch TV. Crazy awesome. way to travel. I was like, I remember when I first walked on that bus, I was like, I, am, this, am, this do is, I get to do I get to sit on this bus? Is this too? the hotel? Like. It was great. It's so fucking great. You had you had a bunch of those. I only did one of the tour buses with like actually sleeping on the bus though. But that you was, but that you, was the cable guy tour. But you got to do some private planes with Chelsea once. Well, one weekend, so that was like probably two flights, three flights, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. That was cool. My only my only experience flying private still. Yeah, still pretty cool. I had you know by the way embarrassing. I, I was reading this whole thing about people were talking about PJs. Like pajamas? That's what I thought they were talking about. But they were talking about prep jets. Oh. Uh, I yeah. was like, well, these people love their PJs. P. <laughs> yeah. They love they, <laughs> they, they love them. Oh, you got one of the old school Josh Wolf all wrestling shirts. Yep. A white one, dude. Yeah, I have a white and a black one. You, I don't even have a white one anymore. Yeah. This is the one I wear the most. That actually one I think I like more than the... the well, it also matches my shoes because of the white blue on it. So... Well, I would look at your shoes today, man. It's just ridiculous. I had a lot of shoes for no reason. In the last, like for my birthday, I've ended up with four extra pairs of shoes. Plus the three I got for Christmas for my girlfriend. So I've gotten seven in like the last four or five months. It's, whoa! Dude, you know, some people on this little spit just came out. So by the way, you know what's been happening a lot on stage? You're spitting while you're talking? Yeah. That's not good. A lot. Should learn a to lot. Should learn to control your saliva. I'm trying. But there's a lot of it happening in the front row. And, you know, I stand right up close to the front. I had a little bit going somebody's drink. I had to buy him a drink. You should just make a joke about you should warn everybody it's in like the front row. It's like a Gallagher show? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a fucking SeaWorld show. you got to warn everybody they're in the splash zone. The, the splash zone? Is that what it's called? The splash zone? Yeah, it is because you can get wet. Because like a, when Shamu jumps out of the water and a bunch of water comes out, people get wet. The so you get so you get splashed by water, splash zone. Do you know what's funny? You know we uh, it sounds did, dirty, but it's not. Yeah, I did Heather McDonald's podcast. Saying she asked me, 
if Joe Diaz, because Joey Diaz used to be your babysitter. Right. She asked me, she was like, did I hear that he, he used to take baths with Jacob? And I'm like, no. But the the image, because back then, Jimmy Joey was a bigger dude, too. The, uh, the image of 350-pound Joe Diaz in one of those tiny apartment bathtubs. He would have gotten stuck. No, I just don't know how much water you fit in there before. Like, you would put in a gallon of water, and then he would sit, and then that would be it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because he would just push all of it over the top. God. He, man, he and I, he called me last night. I told you. He called me last night. Nobody makes me laugh. Nobody makes me laugh. Like, I think for me, like if you said right now, 15 minutes, who's the funniest 15 minute comedian, a guy that is going to like at his best, Jody is. In that comedy store or OR, God damn, dude. Just like a monster. Mm. Who's? I don't really know if I. I mean, I've seen Joe Diaz's comedy, but ever since I've become of age, I've never really seen Joey perform. Oh, dude, it's he's so. Y- y- look, man, I know, I know that I'm funny. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm past the point in my life where I have to be like, oh, you know, I'm just happy to be here, and right, right. I'm past that point. I, I know who I am, so I don't feel bad when I go. Yeah, I'm funny, man. I put on a good show. People come to my show; they had a good, they have a good fucking time. Mm-hmm. The laughs that he gets are different. It's a different. It's a uh, like grabbing like your running, stomach. Running out of breath, dude. Last night on the phone with me, I. It's just a different type. It's just a different type of funny, right? But you also know the man for twenty five years. Yeah, absolutely. And so. he he also knows what to say to right exactly to make you to laugh. make me laugh. Yeah, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Who do you watch any comedy? You know, I don't watch a lot of it now, just like because when I work or like when I'm doing anything in my free time, I'm usually playing video games or hanging out with my girlfriend or working on a lot of comedy shows. Anyway, so I just kind of get my fair share through what my work is. Um, but I did watch uh, somebody's comedy special recently with him on. <sighs> I want to get his name right. Where did you watch it? Netflix. It's okay. called The Homecoming King. Um, it sounds really familiar. Young guy? Has- Has- Hasan Minaj? Hasan Minaj. <laughs> yeah. He's really funny. Yeah. That Homecoming King, though, also, like, that special was was really like super well done. I thought it was done so beautifully. He brought his own culture into it. He mm-hmm. brought a lot of things to light, like from being a minority in the States. Like he he did it so well. I thought he did it like it was so it was so beautiful. He brought his own languages into it and what he learned from his parents. And you know, I I thought it was an all around really good special and I think he's super funny. I also, for the first time, watched Bo Burnham's very first special. Yo. Holy shit, is that funny. Oh my God, he couldn't do any of that stuff now because he would get fucking canceled. But God damn it, is that first special so funny. Dude, holy shit. He's really funny. I, and not only that, yeah. talk about canceled. I challenge anybody listening, go find a clip of Chelsea lately somewhere. Oh my God, yeah, 100%. Uh, Every show, we were doing something that would get us canceled. Every Yo, one of the things that I did that was encouraged, I used to wipe my nuts on people's stuff and they would film it. And then we would reveal it to people on the show. The, the you know who I got, you know who I got with the nuts? I, I know I know two people you got with the nuts on TV. Who? Heather McDonald's, yep. we're talking about yep. it. And Brad Walk. So the three nut three nut jokes that I did is that is so it was called balls on was the joke. And yep. Heather, we got Heather because Heather wanted free shit. And the show bought her a Tory Burch dress, but told her that Tory Burch sent it for free. So she, of course, wanted to wear it. But I, they filmed me rubbing my nuts on it pre-show. Uh, I wouldn't just say rubbing the nuts on it. You stuck it in the front and pulled it out the back. That was Brad. Brad flossed it. Yo, oh, Brad flossed it. And then with Brad, Brad used to eat a bagel on Bagel Mondays. And so Chelsea was like, hey, you got to rub your nuts on a bagel and we're going to get Brad to eat it. And he's not going to know. And I was like, okay. 
Can you imagine doing that now? No. Yo, and then the last one, Joe Coy had a very special makeup brush. Oh. So we have him on camera kissing it after it had just been on my nuts and rubbing it all over his face and him going, I love it, I love it, I love it. But you know, they got me back. Do you know what they did to me? No. So Grohl, Dave Grohl. Oh, came. I was there for that. Yeah, when he handed you that shirt. I'm a huge Nirvana fan. Huge yeah. Foo Fighters fan. Yeah. And Grohl rode on his motorcycle in leather pants, took a Foo Fighters shirt, rubbed his nuts on it, and then signed it. And then gave it to me. And I was wearing it on the show. And it just, they were like, smell it. What does it smell like? I'm like, it smells like teen spirit. Yeah, but, but uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yo, I don't care. I'll take girls nut sweat. I'll take girls nut sweat. Yeah, I know that sounds bad, but if you were like, would you sounds like this, dirty, but isn't? Would you like this T-shirt with Dave Girls nut sweat on it? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would also probably say the same thing. Yeah, is there? Can you put a pube and a, any kind of smear on there? Yeah, makes it more valuable. Exactly, makes it more valuable. Yeah. Who's got a shirt that has a Dave Girl pube and shit stains on it? Nobody. Nobody. From Dave Grohl himself. Nobody. Now you, you can sell that to a super fan for a gazillion dollars. By the way, I am the super fan you can sell it to. Yeah, right. But I could find a, a deeper super fan than you to sell that for uh, so much money. Yo, you know what I forgot to ask you? Huh. So with this all, this Will Smith, Chris Rock thing, I don't want to break, get into all that shit. Right, right, right. But I'm super curious. What would, because Jaden Smith was like, that's how we do. And so let me ask you. Poor taste, by the way. Let me ask Absolutely. you. Do, what would you expect me to do in that situation? You're at home watching. What would you expect me to do? Would you, how would you have reacted if I had done what, what Will Smith did? Like all, all the stuff like, like, and, and you know what? Here's the thing that none of us know. None of us know what's happening at the house and how much it really bums her out. By the way, this is not me excusing Will Smith. Not at all. I think what he did was cowardly. and He hit somebody who was smaller and weaker, whose hands were behind his back, who thought he was coming on stage to tell a joke. And it was a sucker punch. And all this other stuff. And as a comic, you fuck your feelings and all this other stuff. Okay. But I'm curious for you. Like, how would you... I, I probably would have expected you to uh, to wait for the commercial break and then go That's catch right. him as he went off stage on the side or if he came off to talk to people. That's probably right. But I assumed you would have waited for the commercial break and gone up to him and said, hey, look, as a comic, I understand your one of your jobs is to make jokes and it's fuck your, fuck your feelings. It's a joke. I understand that. However, this is something that she's come out and publicly said that it bothers her a bunch and it's not a choice for her to have her hair this short. It's because of what she has as a disease condition what, what we want to call it. So, and then you, you know, I would expect you to say, look, I'm cool and I understand it's your job. I would love for you to apologize to her. And if you don't, they're going to cut back. That's right. That's they're what gonna, They're going to cut back to the Oscars with us throwing each other, with me throwing yeah. you over a table. Yeah, that's like, like that, like that, like that hundredth year anniversary uh, NFL commercial. They're all tackling each other yeah. at the tables, but it would just be two people and only one person being thrown through the table repeated times. And it would be, that person, by the way, do you know what I'm saying? Like, that is for sure how a grown up responds. A grown up responds by walking to the side of the stage and handling it. Like, a, yo, to me, when you do it on public in camera, in front of the camera, that's a show, man. It's a show. You're putting on a show. 100%. You really want to get your message across? Catch that dude on the side of the stage. No cameras, just yeah. me and you, man. Yeah. And look, you know, you may beat me up, but we're going to see because you're going to have to apologize tomorrow. Like yeah. that's the way to do it. Absolutely. But now let me on a completely different topic. Not completely different, but and I'm gonna say something to you that if you were going to pick a celebrity to fight, who would it be and why? Can I tell you that when somebody asked me this question a long time ago, can I tell you what I said? I hope you didn't say Tom Cruise. No, I said Spade because I think I could beat the shit out. I was thinking the same thing. Not that I, I, I love Spade. Look, I love Spade. Yeah, dude, shout but, out, shout out, one of our favorite people. But I'm I like, think I got a pretty good shot. No offense, David, you could have some secret fighting skills, but you don't. Um, I so if I think in because I don't hate anybody really. Oh, that's not true. That's definitely not true. Do you want me, guys? You want to hear it? You want to hear the dirt? You ready for it? You ready it's for the dirty dirt? Not dirt? True. 
You know, the, who's the one guy in Hollywood that bothers the fuck out of me? Mr. Wait, 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 wait. whisper it to me because you could be wrong. Huh? Who? No, no. Oh, no. okay. So I can't say that one then. No, no, no. That's what I was going to say. No, no. Oh. Dude, yo, you ready for the dirt? I don't give a fuck. I, you know, it's not like me to stir shit up. I mean, we're already here, though. You can't back out on it. So either pick your pride and prejudice over this, or you better just go out and say it. Really? Up to you. Okay. You ready, guys? Here's mine. If I could fight anybody in Hollywood, and honestly, it wouldn't take much provoking. You ready? Yeah, actually, I'm ready. It's a comic. A comic that, that, that we know well? No. And let me just preface this by saying this. I have a ton of respect for this dude professionally. A ton. He was successful and then lost, not lost, but just was persona non grata and built himself up by taking a couple of bold risks that paid off for him. I think he's really good at what he does. I really like watching him on stage because he does it differently. That being said, if you were like, hey, we're gonna set up a boxing match between you two, are you in? I'd be like, yes. No gloves, no gear, just fist, fisticuffs. And only because I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you don't like me. It's fair. You're not gonna be dismissive. Okay, who is it? You ready for this? Yeah. Not that he's ever gonna see it. Mark Marin. I don't even know if I know who the fuck that is. You don't have to. He's some 72 year old dude who was a little bitter. But I like how you said he was 72. I'm gonna tell you again total respect for him, how he's built his career, and what he does on stage. And a complete douche nozzle. That's uh, to me. To me. He, uh, he's got a ton of friends, and people like him, and everybody's got the thing. And guys, I know there are people out there, including Mark Marin, who don't particularly like me. No problem. I'm respectful to those people at least. Dude is dismissive. Can't have it. Won't have it. Can't have it. I would never say anything, whatever. But if you were like, hey, who would you punch in the face? 100%, Mark. I would love to take a shot at your face, man. Hey, and by the way, yeah, no, I'll stop right there. Yeah, we're, that, that was that was good. That yeah. was good. That was good. I mean, it, 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 it feel like didn't feel angry, right? Because I'm not angry at the dude. No, you just calling him. You calling it for what it is. Yeah, that's, it. that's all. I bet you I'm not the only person with that opinion on him. Probably not. And I bet you he knows that. And I bet you he doesn't give a fuck. No. So these are all good. Of course he does. He's the most unhappiest millionaire in the world. Go ahead. <sighs> who do you think you t you got? I don't know who I got. I mean, you, right as you said that, funny enough, Spade did come to mind. Now, not because we dislike him, but because we want to win. Bingo. Okay. Hey, David, we love you, man. But one of my favorite people I've ever worked for in this entire industry. Yeah. One of my me favorite, too. like, top dog celebrities that I've ever met. Fucking great For a guy. man that has everything. Yeah. He gives as much as he can. 100%. And, and, and I, I absolutely love him and would work for him any day of the fucking year. But we also both think that we could be Beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I just think the reach for me on my own, it would be like one of those bullies who just holds the kid by his head while he swings under my arm and then I just go. Psh. Yeah, man. Yeah. You listen, you ever, not everybody's got every skill. Like, I don't think I would be the best fighter in the world, but I think I could beat up Spade. Yeah. Who else would I pick in that? I don't know. You'd have to let me think about that one. I heard one time, like, I, when I think about, like, celebrity fights, it always dates me back to when Justin Bieber wanted to fight Tom Cruise. Uh, bad move. For Bieber. Yeah. I, it's a great, it's great television, though. I would love to see that because I think Tom Cruise would literally beat the living shit out of Justin Bieber. Well, I think... Which would be so much fun to watch. I think what people forget about Tom Cruise is that to beat him, you're going to have to kill him. Like, yeah. That dude doesn't seem like he's going to be like, yeah, you got me. It's it's that scene, whatever. What's that movie? Any movie? Pick a movie. Top Gun, where he learned how to fucking fly. Where a he plane. just keep, where people keep getting back up. You're like, stay down, man. Stay down. Oh, it's like uh, Avengers. It's like Captain America when he keeps getting his ass beat by Thanos, but then gets stay up and goes. Stay down, with man. The stay down. And you know who's not staying down? Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. He did, first of all, 
I would love to see him in a fight. I just want to see how he gets those little arms and legs. Because, you know, in movies, I love watching him run because he's got those little T-Rex arms. Yeah, but he's got the, he's the best, he's the best action runner in a suit. No doubt. Don't, yeah. you can't question it. Like, the man is full he, arm in a suit. Full knee? Up, yeah, dude. yeah. Like, that scene of him in, in Mission Impossible where he's running away from the sandstorm in Dubai after he just scaled a building. Like, well, what about the one where he's jumping over the building tops? That's... Mission Impossible, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Two. Two or three. One is, of those. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the, is the best Mission Impossible. Which I believe is... Uh, although, although... No, no, it's two or three. It's one of those. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the best, except for maybe the last one. Yo, dude learned how to fly a helicopter. I'm so... You say what you want about that crazy little dude. But he hung off on an airplane. An AC-130 that took off. He hung off of an airplane. Bare hands. He learned how to fly that fucking helicopter. And he also learned how to fly a fighter jet for a fucking Top Gun. Yo, this dude, you say what he wanted. Th listen, he's insane. Cool. Resume is outstanding. And can run in a suit, that little fella. I buttoned mean, up. Not even, not even unbuttoned, buttoned up. But I think you know what he does? And and I think this is movie magic. And Freddie, um, for those of you, Freddie right. Prince Jr., he told me, he was like, yo, I go, he runs fast. He goes, no, he's, it's just, he's moving his arms and his legs are going up and down real fast, but he's not going that way very quickly. I'm like, it looks like it. He's like, no, the move, the, the camera's on a dolly. So yeah, it helps his the speed. camera does move faster than him. Absolutely. And he's doing that. You know what I mean? I, but I'll tell you this as I, I right now would challenge Tom Cruise to a race. You can't even beat me in a race. Dude, you're seven four. You're beating Tom Cruise. One of your steps is five of his. Yeah. So you're beating Tom Cruise in a race. I, I wasn't. And plus, dude, I don't want to like. You're twenty five. If you couldn't beat me in a race, I would have some serious concerns about you. Well, yeah, I could definitely beat you in a race. Now, if we ran hundred meters, I could run two hundred faster than you could run hundred. Zero percent chance. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Maybe one fifty. Nope. You would pull a hamstring halfway through and I would catch up. My man, you're gassing out. Gassing out? At 200 meters? You're, because you're going to start out too quick. No. You, you forget I ran hurdles in high school. I had to pace myself all the way through that. Cool. Yeah, the dinosaurs walked the earth too. That was a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, back when you were born. Don't try to hit me with a time frame. <laughs> Don't play if you like that. Uh -uh. Yo, okay. Nah. Yo, official bet. You tell, pick your, pick your, not 100, 100 because you're going to beat me. Uh, I got 150. You're doing 150, I'm doing 100. Is that what you're telling me? Because what do you think you can run 100 meters in right now? World record time is nine seconds. A little, a little over nine seconds. 11 seconds. Not a goddamn chance you can run 100 meters in 11 seconds. Why not? World, not world, world record is nine seconds? Not even close. You can't run 100 meters in, in, in nine seconds. 11, 11 seconds. 11 more five. Dude. I, in high school, I ran, and I was running, running in high school. Yeah. My 100 was 13 seconds. Mm. 12, like in spikes 12 seconds no get the fuck out of here that's 15 uh, at least okay and so you're doing 150 in 15 seconds I'm doing 150 faster than you can do 100 maybe so guys here is a new thing that Jacob and I are doing I'm gonna, I'm gonna test that there I'm gonna we're gonna go to a track and I'm gonna just get some get some running in but yo well here's the truth I'm gonna need a little time to stretch out right now my strides would be about this just not to pull a hammy yeah. But dude, I'm in the gym right now. I'm back in the gym. I'm, I'm, my legs are getting stronger. Are you doing sprints in the gym? Fuck you, no. I'm exactly. So your legs can be strong. It doesn't mean you're sprinting fast. That's not how that works. That's true. That's not, you think the Olympic body, you think the Olympic lifters are super fast runners because their legs are big? No, man. Well, then that, that just, then what is your point? Okay, let me ask you something. On a scale of one to 10, what type of shape are you in right now? Ooh. Maybe a five. Okay. So my point being this, I think you are going to be substantially slower from yard one to 150. You're not going to be walking, but you're going to be slower. Okay. And I think, so say you run a hundred and what? Let's call it right now, 15? A hundred and 15? Yeah. No, no, I'm calling 113. The same, you're same as your high school speed. 100%. Okay. 
So add I'm faster than I was in high school. Cool. Add seven seconds. Right? Yeah, okay. Twenty? Yeah. You say me taking it's gonna take me twenty seconds to run hundred meters. It might be. You're right. But it might. I, depending on the day, how hot it is outside, how much you've stretched, what you've eaten. Like. Okay, so right now, guys, here's what we have. Jacob and I are going to start filming competitions. We're doing, This is a good one. I like this one. And then there's a racetrack near my house in Vegas where we can drive some sports cars. I want to fast. And see. But we got to – here's the deal. We have to start making bets. What was the first bet we were going to make? It was the athlete and said, uh, whoever wins, um, like you, I had to say for you that you're a better athlete than I am. Or right, but what was the bet? I don't know. It was like a best of three. It was like trash can basketball and then like another thing. And then we never did it. No, I know when we never did it, but the bet was, oh, it was the, you had to, if I win, you have to do the OnlyFans. Yeah. And then if I win, you have to admit I didn't order the porn. Okay. That was the jig. So pick your contest, and that's what we'll do. Pick your contest. The driving. Because I want to gas you in the driving, too. I also just want a reason to drive a really expensive car. Okay. If I got to be honest. Okay. If I can think of something sooner than the driving, that's what we'll do. Yeah, that's fine. Because I, I want you to start your OnlyFans account. Okay. I mean, dude... You're just missing out money by the debt. I don't think so. It's also just uh, so much time and effort that I don't want to put in. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you something right now. Ready? Beep. No, because then there's also all the messages you have to answer and all the requests. Like So where most of the money then would come from is like the personal requests that people would make that you send to them for a tip. It's a lot of extra time. No, it isn't much. Hey, will you take a picture of your toe as toe burrow? Sure. Got to set up the toe. Got to paint the toenail. Okay. Yeah, but here's the deal. Once you take a picture of Toe Burrow, you have it. Man, I work 60 hours a week. Uh, but, I just buddy, I just, I, this is for the big money. This, this is... I'm not going to be making more than like... Uh, there's no way I make more than 1000 a month. But extra 1000 a month is a lot of money. I think... You would make more than you make at your current job. A month? Yep. So you think I'm going to make... Let's Dude, just... it's going to be a great combination of people who jerk off the feet, people who think it's funny, and people who just want to support you. Those three things. Now, I think the people who jerk off the feet might be the biggest group, which is Probably. fine. Which is... I, there's a dude who's been after me for years to show a picture of my feet. Like, years. And he's from near San Diego, which is, by the way, everybody, we're going to be in San Diego this weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, doing stand-up. And ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Um, but, like, we're uh... We're selling out. We're selling out. Oh, dude, all the... The shows have been selling out. Yeah, I know. I love it. I mean, and, and surprise guest this weekend, Chelsea Lynn's coming down. Oh, that's right. We uh, love her. Oh, she's so funny. She's going she to be there when I'm there? Friday. Oh, sick. Yeah, that's going to be a muy bueno time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tonight we're doing a mushroom podcast. You're doing a mushroom podcast. Yeah, you're going to have to drive me home. I'll be there. Yeah. I, by the way, dude, I had a question for you. Mm -hmm. As I was driving past in and out today. I had yesterday. You did? Mm hmm What was the first meal you had home from Panama? McNuggets. Is that what you were looking forward to? Well, that's what that's what that's what my girlfriend and mom wanted because we had uh, she had done so well not eating out the whole entire time, and so for the last three days, like before I came home, she was like, "I am craving chicken nuggets," and I was like, "Yeah, we'll just go get some when I fly in." So we went and got some nuggets. Let me ask you a question. Out of I'm going to give you a couple of chains. Rate these in order of good. Good, like best to worst. Yes. Okay. Even if they're not bad, but just like best. Mc to McDonald's. Okay. Burger King. Okay. Jack in the Box. Okay. Wendy's. Okay. What did we throw in and out in? You want to throw Carl's Jr. in there just for fun because it's like the same tier? Carl's Jr., not in and out. Yeah. Okay, so first on that list is McDonald's. Okay. 100%. Does, Mainly on the fries and the nuggets because... Do they have the best burgers out of that group? Best burgers? No, nah, I'd probably put... Well, I don't know. A Big Mac kind of slaps every now and then. I'm not going to lie. Big Mac's kind of slap. Yeah. 
But they have, like, McDonald's just came up with the grossest thing of all time. It's called, like, a land, air, and sea burger. So there's a hamburger, a fish fillet, and a fried chicken on the same. Uh, it looks like, it's like a Big Mac, but triple stacked, but it's different patties. And, uh, fish and meat. No. Pass. And also, pass on the fish uh, fish fillet from fucking McDonald's. That shit's gross. Yeah, yeah. By the way, in general, pass on fish from fast food restaurants. Agreed. Yeah. So I'm going to go McDonald's on the strength of the fries and the fountain drinks, right? And the nuggets. Yeah, and the nuggets, nuggets are fire. Okay. And the apple pie. And the apple pies. Okay. The apple pies are guys. And, and on my birthdays, shamrock shake. Yeah, okay. Bingo. And the sweet tea. Sorry, we're also adding that. Sweet we tea. We make ribbon it. Nah, not a big McRib guy. Me neither. I don't need to eat pigeon. Nah, it's not not worth it. Okay. okay. Uh, second on that list, I would probably throw in... Um, I'd probably throw Carl's in there. Carl's has got some... Probably the better burgers out of the group. And then also, uh, their chicken fingers are surprisingly fucking delicious. I think their burger options are the best. Double, West, double Western bacon cheeseburgers, yeah. $6 avocado burger. My man, that's Come Santa on. Fe chicken sandwich. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, third, I'm throwing Jack in a Box. Yep, because I go Jack in a Box because of variety. And curly fries. Their curly fries are yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, fourth, I'm throwing BK because, look, I'm not a huge BK guy in the first place. Like, I know we were a lot when I was a kid. Like, we'd go get a Whopper a bunch. I'm going to tell you right now, for me, Whopper is the best hamburger going. I just, I just also have, I also got a lot, I'm not going to say, I probably haven't had BK in like 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yep. Um, but also their, their, uh, I think it's called their chicken fries. Like they're, like there's like a chicken, chicken fry something. I don't know what they are. They're super fucking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and finally Wendy's. There's nothing good on that fucking menu. All of it sucks. It's disgusting. You and I could not agree more about Wendy's. First of all, fuck you and your <laughs> square burgers. Why? Agreed. Is, yo, Agreed. Yo, I don't even care how it tastes. I don't care how it tastes. On principle. Why is it square? I'm not eating a square burger. Agreed. And your bun eats my asshole. It's so bad. Terrible. Like, now, I will none say, of their burgers are good. I will say this. When we were poor, that dollar menu, the, the baked potato and all yep. that stuff, wh- that's the only time I ever did Wendy's out of necessity. But now that we don't have to. A couple extra dollars in my pocket. Wendy's can eat a dick. And I have people who are like, Wendy's is the best. If get you the, think Wendy's is the best. Get the fuck out of here. I, I say this without hesitation. You don't know anything. And you need help. You don't know anything. You it, need help. For sure. 100%. Like, there's nothing that I Their fries say. are thick. Just. Their nuggets are hella overcooked or undercooked. I don't even know how the fuck you undercook nuggets. Can I taste them right now? I'm going to admit something to you. Never had a chicken nugget in my life from McDonald's or any other place. Really? In my life. Interesting. Never had a chicken nugget. Interesting. I, I don't know why. You're not missing anything. I just never... Here's the thing. A couple other things I'm going to tell you I've never done in my life. Okay. Ready? Never had a chicken nugget. Ready for this one? I've never blown my nose in my life. I've never blown my nose. Whatever that feeling is. In my, well, maybe I did when I was three, I don't know. But my recollection, I've never. Adult get, life. Adult, adult life, life, never blown my nose. How is that possible? I don't like, I don't think I would like, when I hear people do it, that noise, that. It's such a relief though. That bubbly kind of. Such a relief. Uh, such a know, relief. When I hear, you know what is the single, ready for this? And I believe that the greatest generation and, you know, grandpa's generation of people. And, yep. Yo, but they were also the generation of dudes with handkerchiefs. That's gross. The handkerchief. I never understood the handkerchief. Take your handkerchief and go to Wendy's, you gross fuck. Yeah. Yo, I'm going to blow my nose in this thin cloth. And then put it back in my pocket. Fold it up and put it in my pocket. And then reuse it later on while it's still wet. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's gross. Yo, the worst thing, my grandfather, when you would, if you sneezed, he would take his handkerchief out of his pot. End of day hanky. Not, not fresh morning hanky. End of the day handkerchief. And just fucking wipe your nose. And you're like, <laughs> but the handkerchief, uh, and that might be the, no, it's the noise, the feeling. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fair. But also strange. What's another thing you've never done in your life? 
Uh, Unless that was the only one, which is totally cool because that's really strange. I'm trying to think what other weird ones I've never done in my life. Uh, I'm trying to think what other people do, what I've seen other people do that I don't do. I mean, there are a lot of things that other people do that I don't do. Right. But uh, but I've done them before. Like, right. I don't, I, I actively dislike chewing ice. Really? And listening to people, you know how I am about hearing people eat or chew. <laughs> Yo, hearing people eat or chew I can't wait to chew ice next year. Is low yeah. key. You know how much the chewing. Oh, I'm gonna literally just order a cup of ice oh, when we get in that green room. Fuck. I can't wait. I'm so happy you told me that because I knew it was the slurping, but now that I know it's ice, oh, I'm just gonna chew ice in the green room. Like literally only ice. Do you know what's terrible? I'm not even gonna eat anything. I'm just gonna eat a plate of ice. Can I tell you what's terrible about this green room? It's like, it's like half the size of this room. Great. So you'll hear everything, dude. Ah, ah. I can't wait. I'm going to film it. What? Tell me something that you've never done. I don't know any weird ones like that. Is that I've weird? Never blown your nose? Yeah. That's weird. Okay. 100%. All right. I've definitely done that. I've definitely also had a chicken nugget. I've never wiped from back to front, but that's not weird. I think that's normal. That's normal. Yeah. Yo, you back to front wipers. That's a thing? You didn't know people back to front? Gary Wolf back to fronts. And he stands up. I guess standing up and wiping, I guess. No. No. Why? His, his arms are the same length either way. Yeah, I don't know why you would stand and wipe. Hold on. Because then you're going to bend a little bit, right? Or spread. Because, but if you front to back, because if you, if you back to front, you're going to have dusty nuts. Also, how do you know this information about Gary? Oh, uh, we've talked about it. Interesting. But like back to front, there's no avoiding dusty nuts. Yeah, you're getting shit on your nuts. Yeah. Nah, that's weird. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, the back to fronter. I'm good. There are back to fronters or people who stand and wipe too. Back to fronter is like the people who put the toilet paper the wrong way. What's the wrong way? The wrong way is it under. You put it over the top. You're that person. I know you are. Under? Yeah. Yeah. It's wrong. It's right. It's wrong. Why is it wrong? It's wrong. For what purpose? It's easier and more accessible. Easier? Yeah. It's, 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 it's not a half same. an inch that way. That's not the same. You're wrong. I mean, that's a terrible argument. You're wrong. Your whole argument is that I'm wrong? Yeah. My whole argument is you're wrong. I mean, it's really hard to debate that. <laughs> I know. Rebuttal that, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I really don't have anything to say. Yeah, that's all I got for you. I, I, so I, I will say this has been one of my more random podcasts for sure. You and I? Yeah. Yeah. It's just gone in a bunch of different directions. I mean, that's kind of how we do it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I so, sometimes we have a little bit and we start somewhere we know we want to yeah. talk about and go from there. But this has just been a full-blown conundrum. Well, I haven't seen you. No. Not, not conundrum. Not conundrum. But like... I haven't know, seen you in six weeks, seven weeks. I know, but we've been doing podcasts while I was in Panama. That's true. So, I mean... I got these cool tattoos. I know, dude. I got a guitar. got that one that says Kisopa. It looks so how many tats you can get? I'm gonna try and fill this arm up by the time I'm 30. So I got five more years to like completely fill in this arm. And just that arm? And from here up, is that gonna be Jackson? Yeah, from elbow up is just gonna be Jack. I'm trying to figure out if I wanna do something like here, but this is all bone, so probably not. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I could do inside of the forearm because that's muscle, but that shit's gonna hurt a lot too. Um, you know what someone told me they had a tattoo right here and they said it didn't hurt. I don't know. I've seen somebody with a tattoo on their head, they said it didn't hurt at all either. Which I find, by the way, bullshit. Here makes Out of sense. Apple? Makes sense. It would feel weird, but this doesn't hurt. But this. Okay, let me pinch your skin. You tell me if it hurts. Well, you pinch your skin anywhere. I know, but that's what I'm saying. That's what the, tat the tattoo is just a repeated needle in your neck. How does that not hurt? Uh, listen, dude, you're talking to somebody who thinks it would hurt. I know I was it would just hurt. Refer I was just, you know, people, if you get a tattoo on your neck, you're not worried about the pain. No. Do you know what I mean? I, like, mean, I mean, my buddy McKay is just like absolutely like. It's guys, covered in tattoos. Guys like us who don't have tattoos on our eyeballs or on our buttholes or on our necks, we're like, I wonder if that hurts. If you're like, hey, go ahead and tap me here on the Adam's apple. You don't care about pain. Nah. Yeah, that's, that's not in the... That's fair. You know what I mean? That's fair. You're not like, is this going to hurt me? That's not even... 
you're not even you're not even questioning pain at that point. No, I don't think so. Because apparently nothing hurts you, except maybe emotional damage. Emotional damage. I gotta show you that fucking video. It's so funny. What is it? It's just this guy. Uh, he. Um, Bing bong. No. He, um, he, what he does is he pretty much imitates like how it was for him growing up in an Asian household. Um, and it's just like one of his big catchphrases is emotional damage. Cause like, it's like his dad will say something to him and then, or he, and then he'll say something back to his dad and his dad just like slams a shoe down and says it. It's pretty funny. That's funny. Why. Makes you laugh. Um, I think I need to take a nap. Yeah, I'm down. I'm going to take a nap too. We'll see. Um, all right, so listen, guys. We're happy to be back together. Um, I can't decide studio-wise if I'm going to do two a month here in L.A. with him and two in Vegas or if we're going to just keep split-screening it and, I, and you know, I'll just get you the camera you need. Okay. We haven't decided yet. Jacob is out on the road with me again, so check the cities that I'm coming to. And whatever city requests him the most, that's the one he'll be going to. He can't come every weekend. Except the month of April because I will be out of town every weekend. Right. So if you want him to come with me, you see me on a schedule somewhere, make sure you reach out and say bring Jacob. Um, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Uh, I'm in San Diego this weekend with this dude on Friday. I'll be there I'm one in night. Sacramento the weekend after. I'm in St. Louis the weekend after. And then the week after that, guys... So fucking cool. I'm at Moon Tower Comedy Festival. I'm doing a 420 show oh, where I'm yeah. going to be toasty with mushrooms and weed. And then I fly to Nashville to do one of my Bonanza extravagandas. They've asked me and have my show. My show's the last show of the festival. So we're closing it out. Fuck yeah. So it's going to be a fucking banger. So if you're in Austin or Nashville... Get a t-shirt cannon and shoot out. I like weird shit shirts. Good idea. Nashville, uh, uh, Austin, St. Louis. Oh, and Baltimore at the end of the month. Baltimore? Baltimore's D. Um, and then uh, Sacramento and you, 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 you heard what I said. You heard him. But we love you guys. Jakey, what you got? Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on uh, TikTok. Um, Youthful Wolf on Twitch. Not on there as much anymore, but hopefully to get back into it um, a little bit this month um, and hopefully a lot of May. Um, hey, man, pod, three A's. Uh, we saw a bunch of your questions. The questions we'll be answering on the next podcast. Yep. Um, so if you have any questions you want to ask us, hey, man, pod, it's man with three A's at gmail.com. Um, is it an exclamation point at the end? No. Hey, man, pod uh, at gmail.com. Also, send us in if you want to see us compete. Send us some doing something, eating competition, whatever you think that I can beat him in. Eating competition, he can definitely beat me in. So maybe not right now, man. I think so. Speed, definitely. Volume, also definitely. Uh, I used to be able to eat a lot. I guess it kind of depends on what it is and on how high I am. That's that's what tells me if I can win or not. There you go, everybody. Anything else you got? Tell somebody you love them. Do something good for somebody today. I like that message, man. Hey, hey Mark Marin, if you're watching this, dude, I respect you. No offense. But let me just take one punch. All right, everybody. Love you. Love you, guys. Thank you for the phone call. It doesn't matter if he's not ringing off the wall. Go where we gotta go. Now who's the man is in the promise?